So today in class we took a look at discrete random variables and we said that a random variable was discrete if it had a countable number of possible outcomes. Uh, so we looked at a couple of examples where we were looking at the um, uh, the outcomes of a coin tossed a few times, uh, the outcome of the Atberger scale on the health of various babies. Um, so again, discrete just means that there are uh, exact outcomes that we can identify and we can count those outcomes. When you have a discrete random variable then you can express the entire distribution of that random variable using a probability distribution like the ones we constructed in class. Continuous random variables are a bit different though in that because it is continuous not discrete you can't count uh, all the various outcomes because there are actually infinitely many outcomes within this random variable. So instead of being able to construct a probability distribution like you can with a discrete random variable, if you have a continuous random variable, you describe that distribution using a density curve. And density curves are something that we've already seen earlier this year. Uh, so I've just sort of made up this continuous random variable here with its associated density curve. Notice that the random variable goes from zero to 1. And the probability for any given event is simply the area underneath the curve. When you sum up the area under the curve, of course, just like with a discrete random variable, the total area under the density curve has to sum up to 1. And this should sound a bit familiar because this is what we were talking about uh, back when we looked at the density curves for normal distributions. So let's say, for instance, uh, that I have my uh, density curve here and we know, or maybe we want to know the probability that x is less than or equal to 0.5. Sorry, I should it this way. Probability that x is less than or equal to 0.5 and like I just said, that's simply going to be the area under our density curve uh, that is less than or equal to 0.5, so that would be that area there. Um, and I'm just estimating here, but let's say that that's about uh, 45%. Which would, of course, mean that the probability that x is greater than 0.5 would be the complement of that, uh, which would be this area to the right of 0.5 over here, and it would also be 1 minus 0.45, so the complement of this would be 0.55. That's really all there is uh, to this idea of continuous random variables and density curves. But let's do one more example. Let's say that I have some curve here, and this time it's going to look like that. And let's say, in this case, the values range from, I don't know, let's do 5 to 15, which means this middle curve, or this middle point is going to be 10. Uh, and we'll call uh, this point here 7, and this point here 12. And so let's consider uh, the situation where we want to calculate the probability that x is between 7 and 12. We have a situation like this. Again, the idea is still the same. We're still looking for the area under the curve between those points. So here's 7, here's 12. We would just want to find the area under the curve between those two points. And again, I am making this up, but let's say that that is, oh, I don't know, probably close to half of our area. So let's call it 52%. That would mean, of course, that the area to the left and the area to the right, when we sum those two areas, would need to give us an area of 45%.